Hello and welcome and in this video I want to show you the close focusing distance of the Campark T100 trial camera. Now about a week ago I bought this thing and did an unboxing and what have you. You know, first impressions. And um, yesterday I thought I'd do a, like a little I don't know, a bit of a test uh, with this particular camera. And I say a test, really I just want to see how close it could focus. And my test basically involved me using one of these clamps which is a small rig clamp and a ball joint. Ignore that. I had to fix it, you see, the hurry. Yeah. <laughs> a big washer. And um mounted on the end of the bird table. Just a bit of an experiment. Because I knew the birds were coming there and I thought, well, that's an opportunity to actually see if we can capture them and see if this thing works and how good it is. So we took some video on this with this camera on this bird table. And I've done a screenshot of the video because the close focusing wasn't that great. Everything in the distance was pretty darn sharp. Um, but close focus, it was quite poor. Um, let me just show you. There you go. So there's a little great tip on the, on the actual table there, as you can see. And that little great tip was flying about all over the place, and which is great, obviously. But it's out of focus. Let me just bring it up a little bit more for you. The bird itself is in focus and some strange kind of pixelation going on there. And also, um, here's even more out of focus. So the close focusing distance is a lot further than I thought. I had the camera mounted between um, the focusing range on the actual table itself. It would have been from about 100 millimeters right up to about 450 millimeters. So I'd say, what's that, about uh, 4 inches to 16 inches. Which is, you know, a little bit short. Because nothing on that table, on the bird table there, that feeder, um, in focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another test. And using a ruler, a long yardstick from my workshop, I'm going to mount that with the camera and take some video and some pictures and see exactly what the closest focusing distance is of the Campark T100 trial camera now for me it's a bit of an issue because i want to video birds and birds are only small generally like that one and i don't want to be too far away and have to zoom up in my editing software i want it to be as big as it possibly can right at the beginning if possible so when i say about close focusing i mean it's like for instance you see this I'll tell you what, let's just get rid of that for a second boy mr great tit oh i like a great tit i do anyway so I'm going to use a rule, but to give you an example, the closer I get to the camera, it will goes out of focus, as you can see. Yeah, I'm in focus, but the camera's not. And this particular camera, it's an Elgato face cam I'm using to video this, which is a good camera. But everything from that first point of focus, you know, from about there, where, oh, where first point about there, and right to the back wall, and beyond is in focus it's a fixed focus camera just like the t100 which is ideal for what it's been used for but generally speaking the close focusing isn't always that great it isn't too bad even this one is like i'd say what eight inches 200 mil which isn't that bad at all session and um so i need to do the test so i can mount the camera in the correct position on the table top so it's when it when it's um mounted there it's going to have to be whatever its minimum distance is so everything on the table bird table that is is in focus because we also want to mount it as well another time in front of the bird um bird boxes you know the, the roosting uh yeah the nesting boxes so um it can't be too close can it i was a bit all blurry be no good at all don't want video like that no and another thing i would suggest is yes it is waterproof, as you can see. It's all nice and chunky. It's got like seals and stuff on it. And then you've got your two clamps clamped down. And it is IP66 or something. Anyway, it's waterproof to a degree. Splash proof or whatever. Still put it in a housing of some description. Even if it's, I don't know, an ice cream container or your hat. <laughs> the reason why I say that is, if it rains, your lens gets wet. You get droplets of water on your lens. And these... That will, well, obviously, it's going to 
you know, it's going to create like a kaleidoscope effect on your pictures. It's going to ruin your images. And then that water will dry on the lens when it's hot, and you end up with like smear marks on your lens, and then you end up blotches in your images. So um, the ideal thing to do is to have your camera protected somewhat from the rain. Even if it's not from the sides, and obviously not from the front, it'll come from the front, obviously it's not going to come out. You won't be able to get pictures where you get, you know. So make sure you've got some kind of hat on it. Uh, so it doesn't actually allow the water to get onto the lens. That's just my idea. I think that'd be a good idea. So anyway, thank you for watching. And don't forget to click like and subscribe. And I'll leave a link in the description down below for this particular camera. And like I said, it's the Campark T100. And they're about 120 euros. And it's 4K. Great little thing. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below. But we do get a small commission for, um, from that if you do what if you do purchase for Amazon. So um yeah, but that's up to you obviously. It's not compulsory. I'm not making it. No, I'm not making it. Anyway, it's time for me to go because I think I better go to bed, you know, so ta ta <laughs> Don't forget, click like and subscribe and comment down below.